Now, on to that review Mo just mentioned. So today, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the non-collectible card game Tonto Core. This is an early deck builder that has its themes steeped in the Japanese anime art style and Japanese made culture. Now, this year marks the 10th anniversary of the game, and Japanime Games sent me a copy of it to talk about because they want to start generating buzz for what is a new 10th anniversary edition that's going to be coming out this year. That's right, Japanese made culture. Nope, you heard correctly. <laughs> so, despite of what this game might look like at first glance, if you Google it right now or have seen the game in stores before, this is not actually an adult card game marketed to adults. It's actually recommended for ages 13 and up, and while some of the themes and artwork are suggestive, and that's being polite, it never actually crosses the line into adult places. Interestingly, this does seem to sort of generally be considered an adult game in America because of the sexuality of the images without being mm -hmm. actual, actually sexual. Now, in this game, your character, your players, you represent the master of a household who's going to be hiring maids with a resource called love. These maids service their master. That's how you take actions, is you are serviced by your maids. And many of the maids can be chambered. And what that means is to place the maid into your private quarters. Now, there's hard to deny, just with that one brief little paragraph, that little sentence, that there's something sexual there. But it's all implied. It's not stated. They never actually say you're doing anything with these maids. Like, it's weird. It's a, it's a Japanese thing, right? It's an odd mix of innocent, but totally not all at the same time. Like, you're not going to find any nudity here. And even the amount of fan service is fairly low. It's not like every card is a bunch of scantily clad women. There are just some of the maids who have a bit of upskirt going on where they're sitting in some suggestive positions. Now, in particular, the love cards are more risque than the rest of the cards. Now, this is all part of what I call Japanese maid culture, which is a thing. It's a thing that I actually thought there'd be a term for other than Japanese maid culture, like otaku or something. There is no Japanese term for this. And maid culture in Japan and now spreading through North America is a very popular thing. Now, it's not something I know much about, except for the fact that I knew it was a thing. Now, there is a really solid article I read from Inside Japan that tries to explain the whole concept. It's called Maids in Japan from Geisha to Kawaii Culture. I know I'm probably pronouncing kawaii terribly. Uh, we're going to include a link to that in the show notes, and I'm sure Sean will drop a link into the chat room as well. Yeah, no, and uh, there's also a second link we're going to link in, which is uh, an older uh, article that's actually from CNN's blogs uh, back in 2012. that sort of tries to delve into a little bit uh, of it uh, from a, a slightly older perspective and looks at sort of how it is, the, how, what the difference is between what we are seeing and mm -hmm. identifying as a sexualized concept to what the Japanese are seeing, which is actually not sexual at all. So, based on this theme, which is pretty unique, some people are going to dig it. Like, there are people who are into this whole thing. I have friends that have gone to maid cafes, and they love this game. Some people are going to hate it. Some people are going to think it's a problematic. Now, it's this is what I would call a potentially problematic game, and that's why I want to have a conversation about pro potentially problematic games in our main topic later in the show. But for now, I'm just going to say... The theme of this game is what it is, and it's up to you to decide if that's something that will impact your desire to play or purchase this game. What I'm going to focus on for the rest of the review, though, is the gameplay, which I gotta say I was pretty impressed by. So we'll be getting more into that theme and the problematic the ideas later, so for now, just accept the terms for what they are, and we'll discuss mm -hmm. that more later. So getting into the mechanics and things like that, Tante Koro was released in 2009. Now, I don't know the exact date, but I know Dominion was released in 2008, the year before, and man, does it show. Like, it really shows. Tante Koro is very much a direct descendant of the deck-building card play of Dominion. Many of the mechanics of the games have direct ties to the mechanics in Dominion. Now, that said, Tante Koro isn't just a re-theme. It does do some things differently. Now, I already mentioned this. In Tante Koro, you play the master of a host. You're trying to become the king of maids, which I thought was kind of a unique choice of terms. I 
Uh, what's odd is on the back of the house, uh, the back of the box, it calls you something else. But in the rule book, it says the King of Maids. I don't know why they didn't go with something more gender neutral, to be honest, because a lot of the people I know that dig this game are female. Now, you are doing this by the tried and true deck building method of using your cards to buy better cards that let you buy more cards and even better cards that let you let you buy cards that give you points, right? That's pretty much every deck builder ever made anywhere until about Star Realms time where they started to figure out you could pack each other with these cards. Now, in this case, the cards you're buying are maids and the resources you are using is love. Now, based on my limited research, this seems to very much be a bit of a translation issue that leads to the, the giggly double entendre problem with this game outside of Japan. Uh, while love is love in English, it's a little more sort of uh, varied Respect. and 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 and. and there's there's more terms available to them in Japan in the actual Japanese, and that's probably what happens actually with the King of the Household problem as well. Right. Is there does seem to be some interesting translation. I was actually on the manufacturer's website and and doing some English uh, some Google translation of the original Japanese website okay. and seeing some interesting changes. So uh, we also have to respect that uh, you know this is a Japanese game that is being mm -hmm. brought over to English with the potential translation issues that uh, come along with that. So each player starts the game at the same starting deck, just like most deck builders. Uh, these are some basic love cards, some points cards, scoring cards. Now in the center of the table, there's the maid market with 10 different stacks of what they call general maids. Now there's 16 different general maids in the game, but you only use 10 each game. So that's a good thing to see because that adds a lot of replay replayability to the game because of the different combos. Now, the town also has a deck of what are called private maids. Now, two of these are always per available for purchase for hire at the all the time, but they come from a deck. And when one's purchased, a new card comes out of the deck. And this is the first major change from Dominion that you'll notice when playing Tante Koro. Because this adds a random element to which cards are available each turn. And I got to say, this is a big thumbs up right there. That is something I really like because one of the things I don't like about Dominion is the fact that it's a static market the whole game. Now, the other thing with private maids, though, is when you buy them, they don't go in your deck. Instead, they go directly into your playing area, into what's called your private quarters. Now, while in your private quarters, private maids give an ongoing bonus. Now, the neat part about the private quarters is it's basically t adding an aspect of this deck build that is completely missing from Dominion, and that is adding an aspect of tableau building. Yeah. So uh, one thing I've noticed, uh, private quarters are actually called chambers by a number of reviewers, I called it. So I wonder if there's, a, if there's been a change in printing at some point along the way. So uh, what they do call it is you have chamber maids and you chamber them. And when you chamber them, you put them in your private quarters. Oh, okay. That's how it's worded in my rule book. Now, maybe eventually they, to simplify that, they just called the chamber maids going to the chambers. Possibly. But I got to say, chambers definitely sounds better than I take this maid and send her to my private quarters. Yes, it does. Uh, also, I'll note that, uh, again, the, there are a number of fan creations for this game. And there are a number of uh, deck randomi or, uh, randomizers mm -hmm. for the general maids. So that to help you get that different play all the time, um, it, there's a lot of support to this game out there. Yeah, it's popular. It's it's very popular. Um, so the other thing you have, like in most deck builders, are a bunch of standard cards that are always available to buy. Um, there's some point scoring cards. There's love cards because your love cards come in one, two, and three. So that's exactly the same as Dominion with your copper, gold, and silver money. Same deal. Um, there's also two event cards. Now the event cards are something. Somewhat unique to this because they're similar to the curse cards in Dominion, but instead of putting them in your opponent's deck, you play them into your opponent's private chambers. Uh, the two events that come in the base game, and I was a little amused by this terminology, is bad habits. You can give your opponent's maids bad habits and illnesses. Now, bad habits give negative points at the end of the game, whereas illnesses are played on a specific maid that's in your private chamber. It's your opponent's private chambers. And what it does is negate their card effects, so they're no longer worth points or do anything. Now, I kind of mentioned this talking to Sean already, but a chambered maid is any maid in your private chambers. Uh, these include the private maids, but also some of the general maids can also be chambered. Uh, it's, I don't want to get into the details of it, but this whole chambering system is the biggest diversion from Dominion, right? This actually lets you remove unneeded cards from your deck, as well as leading to some interesting decision points where you have those general maids that do something for you, but are worth endgame scoring if they're chambered. So it's a, do I hold on to the card to keep hopefully get a few more draws out of it, or do I chamber it now before the game ends? Now, this is not something I've actually seen in any other deck, though. 
Now, players continue to take turns with hiring maids back and forth and playing their maids and being serviced by their maids until two of the maid decks run out. At that point, game ends. Players add up their points. All the points are on the cards, so it's just a matter of counting your cards. Player with the most points is declared king of the maids. Now, I don't know if I mentioned on the show before, but I know I did do a Dominion review. And I got to admit, I'm not a huge Dominion fan. And I was pleased to see Tante Coro did something fresh with those original mechanics. Yes, it still has a static market, but in addition to that, you have that whole private made deck, so new cards coming out. And then that adds a touch of variety and randomness that I can found lacking in the static market of Dominion. Then you add in that whole tableau building aspect, and you actually have a game that's quite distinct from Dominion, while still clearly showing its Dominion roots. Now, I have enjoyed every game I've sat down to play Tante Coro, and I'll admit, the first time I sat down, I was skeptical. This same thing goes for everyone I played it with so far. Most players, I got to say, when they first see it, like, man, I wish I had gotten a picture of Mike Murphy's face when he first sat down at my table Monday night to play this game. Uh, but then the same players who were extremely skeptical, cracking jokes, by the end of the game, commented how surprised they were, how good an experience and how good the actual gameplay is. Now, I did. I enjoyed this game a lot, but I got to admit, it's not my favorite deck building game. This is definitely feels a little dated. It is from 2009. It's definitely showing its roots. Uh, there are many more modern deck builders that I prefer overall. Like some of the aspects, like the mostly static market, feel dated. And I don't remember the last time I played a deck builder that only has one resource to worry about where you're not tracking multiple things. But I did find some fun with this game. And if you're a fan of that whole Japanese mate culture thing or anime art style and fan service, or if you're a big fan of Dominion and want something that mixes it up a bit, I do suggest checking out Kante Koro. All right. 